Using the MRSA by year data, let's begin by doing a distribution of the variables of interest. Analyze distribution, and we'll look at state, and then we'll look at number tested, number resistant, and percent resistant. So remember, this is looking at within hospital, within states, what were the total number of samples tested for MRSA, what were the number resistant to the bacteria, and then, or to the antibiotic, and then what was the percent that were resistant. And so if you look at the distribution, because all of the data comes in a character format, we're getting what we were used to seeing with percentages. So we've got even numbers of observations from the states, because again, this is four observations, so one for every state plus Washington, D.C., plus Puerto Rico for four years. The number tested is coming in as a character, and you can tell that particularly because things like 688 are showing up prior to the number 70. So they're not in numeric order, they're in character order. And then in addition to that, we can see that we have character information for insufficient data here in the percent resistant and the number resistant. Now the insufficient data is coming from this section right here. If the state reported fewer than 20 infections, the guidelines for this data collection uh, is that the data is insufficient to uh, have large enough numbers for number resistant and percentage resistant. So the first thing that we need to do is actually change our number tested, number resistant, and percent resistant to determine whether or not uh, we can use them as numeric variables. And before we can do that, we need to find out how many are insufficient, how many uh, have fewer than 20 samples. And you can see here, since we selected it, it's telling us that there are 31 with insufficient data. But rather than simply excluding those and trying again on numeric, we want to create new data new variables to indicate the numeric values as well as telling us when something is insufficient, when a state has insufficient results. To do that, we're going to create a new column. I'm going to call that column sufficient data. It's going to be a character variable. We would like to create a formula and we'd like to edit that formula. Jump will open the formula window. Over here on the left are the options that we have in creating formulas. Each of these gray dropdowns will reveal a larger menu. In the middle, we have the columns in our data set. Along the top here, we have common numerical operations and then some jump formula operations. And then this is our formula window. Right now, all we need to know is if the data is present or absent. So we're going to do an if then else statement. Conditional if number tested equals, just press the equal sign on your computer. And then here's where it gets a little tricky. Jump is a little bit helpful. I want to start by typing in a quote. And you can see here that Jump has now added both the initial and end quote. So I'm going to type in the 1 to 19 and I don't need to put in an end quote. If I put in an end quote, you get this error. Unexpected end of input because now you have two character or end quote strings. So press continue editing and remove the second quote. And now I just want to say not sufficient. And notice I'm not going to type the end quote again. And now I'm going to say sufficient. And press OK. Press OK. Make sure I save. And of course, I know that I have 31 rows. I've already done the distribution on that. So now let's actually check to make sure. Let's look at the number resistance and sufficient data together and press OK. And you can see if I click on insufficient data here, it is highlighted also the 31 rows not sufficient here. 
as well as in the rows menu showing that I have 31 that are not sufficient or that have been selected here. So I have 31 rows out of 208 that I won't be able to use. That's actually fine. You simply don't have data. It is, however, important to report how much and how frequently that happened. And there's a couple of ways to do that. So I can actually do a table summary. And if I simply just want it by year, then I can put event year in my group and sufficient data in my group and press OK. And jump will create a new table that has by year the number sufficient and not sufficient. If you'd like it by state, go back to the same summary menu and put event state in your group and sufficient and not sufficient here and press OK. And here you can see that for Alaska, we have two observations that were not sufficient and two that were sufficient. And you can see here for Hawaii, we had three not sufficient and one sufficient. And that will tell you that summary data by state. You could do it by state or by year, or you could simply do it overall for sufficient, not sufficient. Depends upon what it is that you are trying to summarize. So now that we have a column that indicates whether or not the data is present or absent, we're going to create three new columns to indicate our numeric data. We do not want to change the data itself from the original form. We'll simply create three new data columns with three new formulas, and that will tell us the numeric value. And that will be in the next video.